Hi everybody, Bobby Ogilvy, Project Manager and Professional Coach. Today's question, how do I get the most out of my day? Okay, so there's, there's obviously a lot of ways to tackle this. Um, one is from a productivity angle. Um, how do I get the most kind of like productive work value out of my day? Another might be from the, uh, you could say something like work-life balance, which I, I think is a pretty flimsy word, but um, I, I, we'll call it um, wellness and sustainability angle. Um, I'm sure there's other angles we can come up with too. Okay, so how do I get the most out of my day? Um, you may have, mean, may have seen some of my other videos where um, I talk about how many hours you should be working in a week. And basically the answer is, you know, 130 hour work weeks, 60 hour work weeks, they do not work. Um, you know, your first hour, your 30th hour, and your 60th hour are not identical. So do more with less. Um, make sure you're, you're working effectively when you're working. Um, and don't just keep trying to cram more in. That's not the best way to do it. Um, yeah, there's a bunch more we could say on that that end of things. Um, one of the things in terms of individually optimizing this might be realizing when you have the most energy. So first, I, I would say make sure you have enough sleep. Uh, what is enough sleep? You're going for seven and a half to eight and a half hours. If you're consistently getting less than that, you're racking up a sleep debt. Um, in the course of a few days or a week, it's not so bad because you can, you can recoup it later. So, you know, what's pretty typical for a lot of people is they might get, you know, maybe you don't get seven and a half, maybe you get seven, maybe you get six and a half. It's, it's tight, but you can, you can do it. And then that means when you do have a day where you don't have to get up as early, you can sleep in a bit. That's perfectly fine. Um, that'll get you through. I, I do want to caution you that you want at least six hours per night. Um, or cognitively, you're not going to function at your best. There's other research which frames it as um, what they tried to do was relate how many hours of lost sleep as if you were had you know so much alcohol in your system. And I think it, I think the ratio is actually as high as for everything below seven and a half hours. For every hour lost, it's like you have two drinks, or maybe it was a drink and a half in your system, right? So. You know, particularly the more you need to do, you know, we're intellectual workers, right? The more we need to do uh, our, our mental, creative, you know, whatever our service work is. Um, yeah, every every bit of lost sleep counts. So don't don't think you can do without that. Um, the, the next thing we'll get into here, um, figuring out when you have the most energy in your day. So again, we're let's say we're going for that 30 to 40 hour work week. One of the questions would be, when do I have the most energy, particularly in this sense, you could think of it as the most mental energy. Um, and for many of us, that's uh, like first thing in the morning or like early morning. So 9 to 12 or even more acutely, you know, maybe it's like 10 to 1130, you know, some, let's say hour and a half to three hour kind of band. Um, for people which are, and, and actually, if I, if I remember the research People become more early birds as they age, as they get older, and younger people tend to be more the, the night owls, right? So it could be that your energy is peaking late afternoon, or like I think even Tim Ferriss says, you know, sometimes he's not even getting going really till, uh, or I mean really mentally at his peak until like 9 p.m., right? So I think for him it's like 9 p.m. till 2 or 3 a.m. is kind of his thing, right? Um, so you're trying to map out basically when you have the most energy. Um, so if you could, you know, mentally block things into a few uh, time of day into a few areas, you'd be thinking about when do I have high energy, which means when can I tackle my most complex tasks? When do I have low energy and I can I can tackle less demanding, more rote tasks? Um, and then, you know, lowest of all, or when do, when do I just not have any energy? What is the, the limit of what I could do? What's a, what's a reasonable ask for my day? Don't think you can just keep cramming things in your day. That doesn't that doesn't work. Um, there's anyway lots of bad stuff around that. Um, I, another one of my videos also deals with the topics of brain dump and beyond saying it's good to catalog what next actions you have. You're trying to get it out of your head, so then then you can focus on whatever you are doing as opposed to in this you know reactive rat race of I gotta keep doing things. You know I, I gotta keep adding more. No, I can't clarify what I need to do. I need to do more and, and like think and plan less. It's like no no you. Um, you need to organize and plan more 
so that you when you do decide to execute you can you're executing on the best things the most high priority things that are worth doing you're not dealing with the low priority things um what else can i say about the productivity end of things uh, yeah that's that's probably a good slice of that you might try different times um that work for you and see when you tend to produce the best results the other thing i will say is that okay so should, is your highest productivity time going to be after your workout or not there's kind of a mixed bag on this so the good thing is after your workout you tend to get you get the rest of endorphin so you're kind of your positive affect is a little higher but depending on how long and how demanding your workout is you can actually be in kind of a brain fog state um and there, there is some formal term for it, but I mean, just think of it as like a girl get after your workout. I know personally for me, um, yeah, a lot of times for me, I'm doing some pretty intense interval training, like workouts that can be 90 minutes long or, you know, sometimes depending on if it's in spurts, even longer than that. So like I burn a lot of calories and I burn a lot of blood glucose in those periods. So I'm kind of wonked out after a workout, which means if I want to do a bunch of cognitive tasks, I'm often trying to plan it before. Because afterwards, I'm probably going to be too zonked, right? So you want to know that about yourself. Now, if you're just doing lighter aerobic stuff, maybe that's less the case and you feel really energized. Or um, maybe a bit more qualitatively, just think about what state, am I, what state of mind am I in after my workout and how can I get the best, the best use out of that state of mind. Okay, so let's, that's from the kind of external productivity output, you know, performance angle. Uh, more internally, how do I get the most out of my day? Um, it's this question about wellness and balance and sustainability. How do I get all my needs met? How do I make sure... I guess we already mentioned the sleep point, so we don't have to harp on that again, but that is important. How do I... Um, yeah, I guess back on the fitness end of things, how do I get my fitness in? How do I do all the things I need to do and um, in, ensure that nothing is left out? You, know, you don't want to have... You could frame it as you don't want to have a lopsided day, but really it's like... Sometimes I almost think it was like, if I were, if this day were to keep happening again and again, if I were to, you know, in a Groundhog Day type scenario, keep having this day again and again, would this be feasible? And I would say, great, this is very workable and balanced and I could keep doing this. Or would I be dreading this as I realize and have to keep replaying out how lopsided and painful and exhausting or in incomplete this day is, right? Um, so back to perma model stuff, you know, did I have my positive emotions? Was I engaged in the stuff I was doing and operating effectively, you know, using the right skill in the right priority areas, which makes sense to me, which I suppose then also relates to, we'll, we'll jump ahead a couple, uh, you know, to the ammo on meaning making and a place that naturally draws out my intrinsic motivation. So a place that I want to work on draws out my passion. Um, did I have healthy relationships around me? Was I relating well to, you know, could be my coworkers, my friends, um, you know, my different social and romantic needs, um, you know, did I have enough of that connection? Uh, and the last one being achievement. Did I get enough sense of, of doing something? Um, you could think of it as almost like embodying my purpose in the world. You know, obviously on a pragmatic level, it's like the money and finances and resources. Did I do what I needed to do to, to keep that where it needs to be? Um, just a quick nod in this place. So you guys know that after about $70,000 per year, more money doesn't make you happy. So below that, less money will make you more unhappy. But after that, you know, really in that sense, statistically, it doesn't really matter if you're making 70 or 170 or, you know, $7 million, you're, you're just as happy a person, right? Which is, which is why, you know, once, you know, professionals are at a certain financial point, it's not the extra money which does it for them. It's the it's the less time. It's the more vacation. It's all these life balance, flexibility, you know, time for myself and my family and what I what I need kind of kind of things, which makes the difference, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, one of the pe reasons people there's lots of good reasons why people do startups. Um, what, one of them is to work in areas where they just naturally have more passion, right? You you want you want to work in places that can actually bring out your passion and your resourcefulness. Um, even in terms of the coaching framework I use, the um, uh, the core self model, uh, that's really trying to bring out your your passion, your resourcefulness, and your sense of purpose um, all at once. And there are kind of specific deficits depending on if any of those three areas are are defunct. They're not up to par. They're not working properly. Um, I I I think I often think about that question about sustainability a lot because it's um I I hate the delusion um that I see people in startups making which is that they have to be 
uh, anxious. They have to be not just motivated, but like they're not allowed to stop. They can't slow down. Um, there's also kind of some mental health issues where, so again, bipolar is called the CEO's disease, right? Uh, because a lot of CEOs, a lot of startup CEOs or just CEOs in general have it because they want to ride those highs and lows, which almost means a startup is a mechanism to go through that. I think thrill seeking is not the wrong word, but they want to have those kind of dramatic highs and lows, or they think, they think that they think the highs are worth the lows. And I, I really, I don't think that's a mature, healthy, or certainly not a resilient, a healthy, resilient stance to take. So learning to be able to be fulfilled and engaged without being that um, unsustainable, I think is really important. Um, I'm not saying you can't do things and enjoy them, but you're kind of, there is an element of perspective taking, which some startup founders, startup folk, which really don't have. And to to benefit yourself, to, to bring out your best self, or a lot of times for these people, you could maybe reframe it as, you know, your future self. Um, there's got to be a better way to live life. Anyway, I love your thoughts on all this. These are these are definitely nebulous areas because, yeah, sometimes we're getting into productivity and things we can measure and very quantitative. Sometimes we're dealing with things which are very qualitative. We're also dealing with a lot of variables, a lot of kind of inputs and factors at once coming into this. So I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this or some other things that have worked for you guys about external productivity or this internal life balance, life, um, life sustainability, all that stuff. Um, and I, anyway, I hope you learned something through all this. So again, I'm Bobby Ogilvie, project manager and professional coach. I'll talk to you soon.